We are recording. Okay, let's go over the Bellworth question. I'm going to pull this up here. We'll do this on here. What's the formula for methane? Good. Give me a hand, please. And we're reacting in a combustion reaction, so the other component, the other active patent is. And products in a combustion reaction that has carbon in the reactant is always going to be what two things? Houston? Carbon dioxide and water. Good. And so here's our reaction. We need to balance this. And so what you get, Houston? Um, in order, one, two, one, two. Okay. So two oxygens, two carbon dioxides. No. No. One, two, one, two. Two in front of the water. <laughs> two in front of the water over here and two in front of the oxygen. Yes? Yes. Okay, that's better. So we got one carbon, four hydrogens, and four oxygens on both sides. Okay, who found ethane? Go ahead, Michael. C2H6. Yeah, C2H6. And guess what? The reaction is going to look exactly the same because it's combustion still. And we just need to balance it. What you find, Michael? Okay. How many carbons do I need on the right? You need two. Four. Yeah, you need two. Okay. And how many hydrogens do I need on the right? Two. Oh, you need three. Three times H2. Okay. Once we do that, add up all your oxygens and see what we need to do. Because since this is our only oxygen coefficient here. Use that little trick we showed you. Anybody? What's the coefficient of oxygen going to be here that I need to put here? It would be uh, three and a half. Three and a half, and then we need to double them all. Okay, so I end up with two, seven, four, six. Okay, don't forget how to do this. The third one here is propane, and if you found this one, it's on the same page. C3H8. And balance this for me. Same steps. And it should take us about the same amount of time. Abigail, help me out here. What do I do for carbon? Put a three in front of CO2. And the hydrogen? Put a four in front of H2O. And then we take care of the oxygen last. I'll put a five in front of H2O. And then we're done. That's it. Okay. Carbon first, hydrogen second, oxygen last. And just a quick review. Everybody remind yourselves about how to balance equations because we're going to be using it a lot for the rest of this chapter. Good? Okay, um, let's take a look at the homework assignment from last night. So take your homeworks out. I'm going to go through the answers on some of these with you. Starting with number one, or you're going to give me some answers anyways. Starting with number one. Letter A. Interpret the following balanced chemical equations in terms of particles, moles, and mass. Emily. Hi. Do you have a question or you want to give me an answer? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, somebody do the particles one. You're using the words atoms, molecules, and formula units. Olivia. Uh, is it one molecule N2 plus three molecules H2 yields two molecules of NH3? That works, okay. And what's another word for NH3, Olivia? Ammonia. Ammonia, good. So you can say molecules of N2 or molecules of nitrogen or molecules of hydrogen or molecules of ammonia. All those work. Um, these are all covalent. Remember, covalent uses the word molecules. How about um, the second part? Put it in terms of moles. Krista? One mole of N2. Yeah, just like that. Okay, those are even easier. 
And then somebody did the math and you figured out how many grams of each, Emily? 34.062. Is what you get on both sides, yes. But I want you actually to walk me through it. So your, your paper should show approximately 28 grams of nitrogen reacts with approximately six grams of hydrogen to produce approximately 34 grams of ammonia. And you'll see 34 on left, 34 on right. If your math shows it right, you can prove that the law of conservation of matter is true. Yay, okay? How about letter B? And now I want you to use the word molecules for acids because all of our acids for the sake of our class are going to be covalent. Okay, <coughs> and let's jump to Hannah. You want to walk me through this one? Molecular level, letter B. Yes. You can. Abby can do it. Abby can do it. <laughs> okay. Is it B? Yes. Okay, so one molecule of HCl plus one formula unit of um, potassium hydroxide yields to one formula unit of potassium chloride plus one molecule of water. Okay, so notice she changed the formula units for those that are ionic. Anything with an I, a polyatomic ion, ion, ionic, so hydroxide, permanganate, carbonate, all those are going to be ionic, okay? And so she's using the word formula unit for things that have a metal and a non-metal, or a metal and a polyatomic ion. And then she's using the word molecule for water, because it is covalent, and she's using the word molecule for acids. Okay, number two, or the second part of B, um, Drianna, can you change that into moles for me? Um, I did it like way wrong, so can I pass Yeah, but it's really easy. They've already balanced it for us, so they just read it to me with the word mole in front of each. One mole of? One mole of, um, HCl. HCl, one, and one mole of Potassium hydroxide yields one mole of potassium chloride and one mole of water. That's it? Okay. Cool, okay. All the coefficients are one, so that's super easy. And then for the math part of that one, Brickley? Um, like step by step? Sure. Okay, so 36.5 grams of HCl plus 56.1 grams of KOH. Potassium hydroxide yields 74.5 grams of potassium chloride plus 15.015. It's close to 7. It's 18. Okay, so 18 grams of water. Yeah, because oxygen is 16, each hydrogen is 1. I don't know what happened to your water. And then you add them together both sides and you get 92.566, okay? The third one, you're going to say two atoms of magnesium reacts with one <coughs> molecule of oxygen or one molecule of diatomic oxygen to produce two, mm, that's going to be ionic, so two formula units of magnesium oxide. Then I can say two moles of magnesium react with one mole of O2 to produce two moles of magnesium oxide. And then I can say, I'm mm, going to do this one real quick. Uh, 48 grams of magnesium approximately reacts with 32 grams approximately of oxygen to produce 80.608 grams of magnesium oxide. Magnesium, yeah, magnesium oxide. Okay. Um, number two we did yesterday. I'll get those back to you eventually. Number three, determine all the possible mole ratios for the following balanced chemical reactions. I'm not going to go through these with you. My book literally lists them in the margin here. There's like dozens of them, okay? So each one of these has about 12 different mole ratios. 4 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 2, 2 to 4, 3 to 2, 2 to 3. Second one, 3 to 4, 4 to 3, 4 to 1, 1 to 1. I mean, it just goes on. Hopefully everybody knows how to do that. And so number four we will do. Balance the following and then give me the mole ratios. Somebody tell me what kind of reaction this is first. Raise your hand. Get this here. What kind of reaction here? I'm up to you, Houston. Give me an answer. To that. What kind of reaction? Double replacement. Okay, double displacement. The H and the Z in swap places. 
Let's balance it here, Shelby. Um, put a two in front of each zero. Okay. Then what? That's it. Yeah. Easy, huh? And then we go one to two, two to one, one to one, one to one, two to one, one to two, one to one, one to one, and so on and so on and so on until we get all twelve matchups. Okay, for something with four components, two reactants, two products, we're going to have twelve matchups. We did one yesterday where we did all twelve. Okay, if I only have three things, how many matchups am I going to have? This was one of our questions at the end of the section yesterday, Kendall. Six. Six. My, how you've changed, Kendall. Um, number 4B, butane, oxygen, CO2, and water. C4H10, this is another one of your hydrocarbons, just like the bell work we did. Let's balance this one. Who's thinking on their feet today? Kendall, you are. There we go. Give me carbon. Um, put a um, 4 in front of CO2. And hydrogen. Put a 5 in front of H2O. And then the O's. How many you got over here? Three. No, 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 you don't. Oxygens. Four times two plus five. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do? It goes in front of this. Yeah, that's six point five. Six point five. Yeah, okay. Thirteen halves or six point five. And then we double all of those. Okay? So we have two, thirteen, eight. 10. Okay, remember these guys? Um, and then it says, give the ratios, there's some cool ratios here, 2 to 13, 13 to 10, 13 to 8, 8 to 13, 8 to 10, 10 to 8, 2 to 8, 8 to 2, 2 to 10, 10 to 2, 13 to 10, 10 to 13, I think I got them all, something like that. Okay, number 57. Is that where we went? 47. 47. Um, hydrochloric acid and lead. I think we started this one at the end of class yesterday. Did we get the balanced equation? PB lead 2 nitrate, I think is the equation. And then you get lead 2 chloride and nitric acid. Okay, make sure you get this. This is a good review problem from last quarter. Okay, what is lead to nitrate? You need to know how to write that. What is lead to chloride? You need to know how to write that. What is nitric acid? You need to have that memorized. Okay, so number 47, we're going to balance it. Who's up for balancing? Alex? <laughs> Put a two. Um, in front of PV CO2. Why? Start with chlorine. High chlorine. So put huh? Put a two in front of the H2. Yeah, let's do that first, okay? Then follow the H's. Put a two over there. Mm -hmm. And then. That's it. And we're done. Good. Okay. They got nitrates. Remember, this is one of those ones where you can look at the, the nitrate as a single thing. And I got two nitrates here and two nitrates here. So I can I'm done. Really cool. Okay, and then on number 47 here, interpret in terms of molecules, formula, and its moles and mass. And the same thing we've been doing. I'm not going to take the time to do that. Okay. Two molecules, one formula unit, two formula units. Two molecules, two moles, one mole, one mole, two moles. Okay, and then we can calculate the molar masses of all these and figure it out in grams. Let's go on to the next one, which was 48. Okay, 48 and 49. Actually, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. These lead right into today's lesson. So if you can figure this out logically with me, which I think you can. 
then you're going to see in a few minutes when we cover today's lesson, whoa, that's exactly what we were just doing in the homework last night. So, Fe2O3, iron 3 oxide, and aluminum produces iron plus aluminum oxide, Al2O3. What kind of reaction do we have here, JP? Good, single displacement. Aluminum is displacing iron. <coughs> and uh, we need to balance, it's already balanced for me in the problem. I got a two and a two. Yeah, okay. So the question is, what mole ratio would you use to determine moles of iron? To determine moles of iron. So over here, we're trying to figure out moles of Fe. Write it down. If the moles of iron 3 oxide are known, so I'm starting with some unknown amount of moles of Fe2O3. This is what I'm starting with. They don't tell me. They just want to know what I need to multiply by for a mole ratio to get that. So how do I figure this out? It's logical, okay? I need something to cancel out, and I need something not to cancel out. Olivia? Uh, two moles of Fe over one mole of Fe2O3. Two moles of Fe over one mole of Fe2O3. And the reason we choose that, this one to this one, is because I need this to cancel out. Remember, the units tell you exactly where to put stuff. And whatever doesn't get canceled out has to be the units of your answer. So this is the answer right here in the box. Two moles of Fe over one mole of Fe2O3. That's all we're doing. That's going to be the key part to this section right here. Section two. Okay, the last question is similar to that, I think. Let me look here. Antacids. Hey, anybody ever hear of milk of magnesia? This is the magnesia, okay? That's why it's named mag, magnesium, okay? And you drink that stuff, tastes horrible, and it reacts with your stomach acid. That's why the way what HCl is. Hydrochloric acid is stomach acid. Extremely acidic. To produce double displacement reaction, MgCl2, this just dissolves in water, and water. And where does all that end up? You pee it out, okay? Okay, so you neutralize the acid in your stomach. You don't want to precipitate to form. That would be horrible, okay? Uh, and then um, you just flush the system. So let's balance this. Who's up for balancing here? Okay. Uh, go to HCO. Okay, to get the chlorines to balance, and then we're, one more thing, I think. Oh, this is here. I got two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, so how many of these do I need? You already got two of them there. Yeah, so we need to double that, right? Now we're done. So we balance that, and the question is on number 53. Write the mole ratio that be used to determine the number of moles of MgCl2 produced. If, and it doesn't tell me what I'm starting with, but we're going to assume we have to have two answers here. So how do I get moles of MgCl2? We're going to need to have that in the numerator. And the coefficient is 1, right here. And so I'm going to have two different conversion factors, MgCl2, and then this is going to be the denominator one, and this is going to be the denominator the other. One mole of MgOH2, and two moles, I have to have that coefficient there, of HCl. Good? So two answers possible on number 53. Check your homework question. Because it doesn't ask me about that. Um, 
write the molar mass to be used to determine the number of moles MgCl2 produced when HCl acts with <coughs> magnesium hydroxide. It doesn't, it doesn't even mention it. So you could, you could write a mole ratio for that, but it doesn't imply that I need to. Okay, that's the homework. Put it away um, and take out your notes. You can turn the air on. Okay, I'm passing out a little um, stoichiometry flow chart. It looks like this. You might want to grab one in the morning. Actually, you guys will be here at the beginning of class, so I'll pass you out one. I'm talking with period six. Okay, this is a little road map, a little graphic. Um, that will help you figure out how to solve problems. Um, this section, section 2 of chapter 11, covers um, three main types of problems using stoichiometry. How do we change something from mass to mass? If you look at this chart, you'll see number 1 is mass, number 4 is mass. So I can go from mass to mass. Uh, how, how do I go from molecules to molecules? Well, I go from here to here on this chart. How do I go from molecules to moles? I go one, two, three, and stop at moles. How do I go from mass to moles? I start at mass and end up at number three, moles. There are a whole bunch of different combinations. And what you're going to see here in a second is <coughs> the bottom of this chart, I want you to ignore until we get to chapter 12. So here, let me clear this up a little bit. Down here at the bottom, ignore the green ones, because we won't use those in this chapter. Okay? The green ones here, this one, and this one, you're going to save for chapter 12. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Don't, don't, just don't think about it. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you right now how to use stoichiometry. If I'm give you a certain number of grams of a reactant or a product, how do we get the number of grams of something else in that chemical reaction? Or if I start you with molecules or formula units or atoms, how do I get grams or molecules or atoms or formula units? Or we can actually start a problem here with moles and we can end up here, here, or here. So this little thing will walk you through, number one, how many steps do you need and which conversion factors do you need? Avogadro's number or the molar mass, Avogadro's number or the molar mass, and this is what we spent yesterday working on, the mole ratio. The mole ratio is going to be the key in this chapter, and it, you know, we always have to change things to moles, convert them to moles using the chemical reaction and then if we need to, change it back into grams or molecules. That's the key. Okay, so the first thing, I'm going to put this up here. If you want to copy this, I will upload this file, the whole, the whole chapter's worth tonight, to the portal. If you want some time and you want to study this or you want to print it out. Um, number one, we already start with a balanced equation. If your equation is not balanced, you will fail, okay? You will fail that problem, and um, I won't say anything more. But you can't do anything unless you balance the equation. Please. So go back and review chapter 9 if you need that, okay? But you have to be able to balance equations and quickly. You can't spend 10 minutes balancing an equation. I will not give you one like 2B, okay, which we will cover sometime this week. Um, where it takes 20 minutes to balance. Number two, we always have to figure out where are we starting? And by that means, on your chart here, am I starting with molecules? Am I starting with grams? Or am I starting with moles? One of three options. Every problem I give you says, 
you have this many grams or you have this many molecules or you have this many moles. That's our starting point. You need to determine what it is. And the first step, if you see here, how do I get from one to two, is always going to be get to moles. you got to get to moles before you do anything and use any molar mass conversion or use any mole to mole conversion. So you'll see here, if we start with mass, I've got to change it into moles. How do I do that? Chapter 10, molar mass. If I start with molecules, atoms, or formula units, what do I need to do first? Change it into moles using Avogadro's number. And occasionally we'll have some shorter problems or some easier problems, which actually starts with moles. So here, if the amount of the given substance is, is in moles already, if the amount is in moles, we start at step number three here. We don't need to do a first step, okay? So we always have to get the moles. Now, here's the highlighted one. Here's the one that's in bold here, okay? Because this is the key part to this chapter. Convert from moles of the known substance to the moles of the unknown substance using the mole ratio. That's why we spent section one figuring out what mole ratios were. That's why the last two homework problems you just did from last night were exactly like this. What mole ratio do I use? I looked at my balanced chemical reaction. I pick those two coefficients off of it. I make sure I have the right one in the numerator and the right one in the denominator. And that is what we're going to use to get from step two to step three. Everybody see right in the middle? It says mole ratio. Everybody see that? Okay. That's why we spent section one. And that's what we did yesterday and last night and just now. Then, after that, I need to figure out, is it asking me for moles? I'm done. Is it asking me for grams? I need to convert one more time back into grams using the molar mass of the, the unknown substance. And if it's asking for molecules, atoms, or formula units, I have one more conversion to do using Avogadro's number. Okay? So at the most, you will have a three-step process. One, two, three. Sometimes you'll have a two-step process. These two or these two. Sometimes you'll have a one-step process. Gives you moles, asks you for moles. Okay? Here's your map. Keep it with you all week. I cannot promise you I'll let you use it on the test, but at least for homeworks and quizzes, yes. Keep this with you. Here's your map. Okay, let's start with uh, a simple one here. Okay? This is a cool question. I'm going to simplify it a little bit. It says carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts, right? <sighs> right there. Carbon dioxide coming out of our mouth every breath we take. What happens here on Earth is it just goes in the atmosphere and there's plenty of fresh air to breathe. What happens in a spaceship is the carbon dioxide would build up. And if you get too much carbon dioxide, you eventually fall asleep and die. Okay? It's not a good thing. So in a spacecraft, they have to scrub, they call it scrubbing, or clean the air so that it removes the carbon dioxide. Because they're constantly recycling air. There is no fresh air in outer space. You can't open the door and say, hey, just let the carbon dioxide out, because guess what, all your air is going to go too. So they use this process. This is lithium hydroxide, and we react it with carbon dioxide. They pass the air over a filter with this stuff in it. It reacts to form lithium carbonate, and unfortunately, there's not written on here. They forgot the water. Okay, so there's water produced in the process here. Otherwise, I had somebody say, "Where did the H go?" Okay, hydrogen has to end up somewhere. Okay, so on average, a person exhales 20 moles of CO2 per day. Wow, sounds like a lot. On average, I get big smaller people or more sleepier people, maybe less active people or bigger people, maybe more. Okay, how many moles of lithium hydroxide would be required to maintain two astronauts in a spacecraft for one day? So let's make this easier. I'm going to change this to one astronaut for one day. Okay, so we'll just stick with some basics here. First step is what? 
What do we need to do before we do anything else, Michael? Balance the equation. Balance the equation. What do I need to do to balance this equation, Michael? Two lithium hydroxides, okay? Anything else? Okay, one carbon, one carbon, two plus two oxygens, three plus one oxygen, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two lithiums, two lithiums. Done. Yeah. Okay? So let's write a equation here. We're going to start with 20 moles of CO2. And I'm going to do it right here because this is a really short problem, okay? So we're going to write 20 moles of CO2 over 1. That's where I'm starting. What I'm trying to figure out? Moles of LiOH, right? So I need a conversion factor to go from CO2 to LiOH. Which one goes in the denominator, okay? That would be moles of CO2, and I'm trying to figure out right here moles of LiOH. So that's going to go in the numerator. So I just put the coefficients with these. Which one's LiOH? I got a 2. Which one's CO2? I got a 1. So what's the answer going to be? 20 times 2. 40 moles of LiOH. And that's it. That's the short. That's about the shortest kind of problem you can get with this. Now, if we actually wanted to answer this for two astronauts, it would be twice as much. And for three days, three times as much. So times two times three, we can get 240 moles. Okay? But we're just going simple here. Okay? Now let's do one that's about as long as they could possibly get. Let me clear the screen here. We've seen this equation before and it's already balanced. Here's iron and oxygen forming iron 3 oxide. I'm going to give you, let's say we start with um, a kilogram of iron. I'm going to do it different than I did the last two periods. Okay? And I want to know how much of this stuff, iron 3 oxide, we can produce <coughs> if I react all of this iron using this equation. So we're changing this into question mark grams of Fe2O3. We're going from kilograms to grams. Now I threw a little monkey wrench in here. What do I do with this kilogram thing? By what? Thousand. Thousand. Let's get rid of the kilogram because we hate kilograms. There we go. But let's just assume that we change that to 1,000 grams, which is what it is. And now we're ready to start, OK? I like to get that out of the way. You don't have to. You can write a whole conversion factor, 1,000 grams per kilogram, and cross it out. OK, so the first step, according to my map here, is I've got grams, and we need to get the moles. So I need to convert this from grams of iron to moles of iron. What conversion factor do I use? What's the number? Kendall. 55.845. And it goes down here in the denominator. Okay, that's step number one. It's going to get me from step one to step two. If I stopped right here, I'd have moles of iron that I'm starting with. I'm going to switch colors. Okay, now we're on the middle step. How do I get from moles of iron to moles of iron 3 oxide? I need a mole ratio. What's it going to be? Which one has to cancel out? I have to put it down here. Okay. 
Yes, and make sure you write these out because you're going to see everything's in moles now. Okay? So you got to have moles of it. you got to identify which one. And up here, it's going to be moles of Fe2O3. Now, we put the coefficients in with them. So that's 2 up here. And this one down here is a 4. <laughs> so that's my middle step. Everybody look at your map. It says I need a mole ratio to go from step 2 to step 3. Everybody see that? That's my step 2 to step 3. I'm going to switch colors again to blue now. And we'll do our third step. Third step is going to go from moles of Fe2O3 back to grams, because I'm looking for grams. How do I change from moles to grams? Molar mass. This is not this molar mass. It's a different one now, because now we're talking about the new thing. So this is going to go from grams of Fe2O3 to moles of Fe2O3. And now off to the side here somewhere, we've got to figure this out. Two irons and three oxygens allow me to round off. 16 times 3 is 48, and 2 times 55, 56, let's call it 112, 112, 48, 160, okay? For the sake of time, I'm going to use 160, and notice it goes in the numerator because the moles have to cancel out. So now I'm ready to check my units and then use my calculator. So. Make sure grams of iron cross out. Make sure moles of iron cross out. Make sure moles of iron oxide cross out. And see if this is what we're looking for. Good. Please do this step, guys. Please label everything and make sure your units cancel out. Because there's nothing sweeter than knowing that they all cancel out and that you're going to get the right answer. Okay, calculator says 1,000 times 2 times 160, divided by 55.845, divided by 4. So you got a lot of numbers to multiply and divide, and I don't even know what the answer comes out to on this one, so let's all try it and see what we get. One thousand times two times 160. Then you go divide by 55.845, and then you hit divide again, okay? Divide by 4. What you got, Abigail? I got 13.96. Try it again. What you got, JP? Abigail. Okay. Is it 1,432.54? Yeah, let's now, I'm, for the sake of argument here, I'm going to call this four sig figs, although it's not. And we'll go four sig figs here, okay? So 1,433, I'm rounding off grams of Fe203. I want you to take your calculators out, make sure you can do this, okay? Now, you have a choice. You can either multiply all your numerators together and then divide by, divide by your denominators. Or you can take the numerator, divide by, multiply, divide, multiply. Whatever you need to do, it's all the numerators get multiplied, all of your denominators get divided. This is 1,000 times 2 times 160. That should be easy. Then you hit divide 55.845, divide 4. You have to hit the divide before each of these unless you're using parentheses, which is really awkward on the calculator. I know you can do it, but it's just a waste of time in my opinion. Divide 55.845, divide 4. If I see it, what we've done is we've gone from upper left to moles, this step. Moles to moles, the red step. Moles back to grams, the blue step. 
Everybody see it? Right here. Cool? Does it make sense? You see what we're doing? You see the path we're taking? Okay? So I can give you molecules to start. We're just going to use Avogadro's number here instead. Or if I start with grams and ask you to calculate how many molecules are over here, or formula units, we'll use Avogadro's number over here in the blue spot. You just follow the map and you're going to have um, at most three conversion factors, at least one conversion factor, the one we did back here. Just one conversion factor if I'm just going mole for mole. Okay? Questions? Good? Okay, that's what you got for homework tonight. I've given you five of these to work. Um, page number. We've still got time, so. Yeah, we got eight more minutes. Let's do another problem here. Get a head start, okay? Let's do number 11. Methane. Haha, -ha, we already did methane for bell work today. <coughs> methane and sulfur oh, react to form carbon disulfate. Oh, sulfate, a liquid often used in the production of cellophane. Cool, what's cellophane? Anybody? Cellophane? That's an old word for something that everybody uses almost every week in their kitchen. What is cellophane? Is it that like plastic wrap? Plastic wrap, yeah. You might call it saran wrap or plastic wrap. It used to be called cellophane. Um, stretch wrap, whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's write this. CH4 plus sulfur produces CS2. And H2 what? H2X. Is that right? S8. Oh, that's cool. That's one of the allotropes of sulfur. That's cool. Okay. Somebody balance this for me. Walk me through it. What do you want to do first, Kendall? Put a two. Put a two in front of H2. Put a what in front of H? Put a two in front of H2. Over here? A two. A two? You want a two? Put a two over here. <laughs> because the S, I'm starting with S, you're starting with the H. Okay. So let's start with, no, that's not going to be right either. Because I got S's here and S's here. Okay, do what you were going to do. No, put a six right there. You want a six? Okay. Survey style. Twelve. We're not done. The H's aren't done. Do what you were going to do. I like what you were doing. Go ahead. Start with the H's. Okay, let's see. So the H's are done. Now I got two S's and two S's. Four. What can I put here to get me to eight? Now it's going to give me ten. Hmm? Anybody? <laughs> I'm taking all the covers here. I haven't done this one, so let's see. Olivia? Four. Let's see. Why? So just keep working at it till you get it. Number two, calculate the moles of CS2 produced when one and a half moles of S8 is used. So I got 1.5 moles S8, and I need to get to, over here, moles of CS2. So this is a simple one, short one. 
and going moles to moles, one step process. Okay, so if you see moles for starting, you're starting at step two. Um, and it's asking for moles, I'm finishing at step three. What mole ratio do I need here, frankly? <coughs> what, gets, what needs to get canceled out? What needs to get canceled out? off of this. I need a conversion factor which is called a mole ratio. What mole ratio do I need? I mean, there's 12 different mole ratios I can get. Which one of those 12 do I need to use here? Okay. Which one do I need? Houston? 2 mole CS2 over one mole C, I mean S8 on bottom. Okay, so I look at what do I have already? I need that to cancel out. So that has to be the coefficient for this. <coughs> what do I need to get to that? And so I need two moles. That's the coefficient here. So I just take the two things. What do I have? What am I trying to get to? And I just take the two coefficients off of the balanced equation. Two moles of CS2, because that's what I'm trying to get to. And this one's going to cancel out. So that's what I need to put in the denominator. So the answer is 3. Okay? 3 moles of CS2. 1.5 times 2. Done. Good? Letter C says how many moles of H2S is produced. And we're going to assume the same thing. So we're going to start the same way. Over here, 1.5. And I need to get to H2S. So what conversion factor here do I need? Mr. Mrs. There's no Mrs. in here. Uh, Miss Brent, Miss 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 Midnight? Um, four H2S over one mole Yeah, use the word moles in here over one mole of hope. S8. S8. Good. So this one's gonna cancel out. H2S carries over. Four times one and a half, six. Okay, so you've got a couple of these easy ones. Then if you look at number 13 and 14 on the next page, those ones go from grams to moles or moles to grams. And then on the next page, you've got a couple that go grams to grams, just like the one we just did in class. So you've got three different kinds. Use your map. Questions? Okay. <laughs>